And now for something completely different. I'm, I'm rolling up my sleeves. We, it's, it's time to talk. We're going to have a real thumb to Jeebus right now. Everyone I know who's a content creator is having this conversation about the fact that it's something we don't always like to talk about. Our numbers are dropping. We're not getting as many views on Twitch. We're not getting as many folks coming to the stream. Your subs might be dropping and it makes you super anxious. It, it's happened to me before and it's happening to a lot of people that I know right now. And it's easy to be start going, alarm bells, panic. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and so I wanted to talk about it. So this video is gonna be about what to do if you feel like your numbers are dropping. And again, why you should listen to me. I'm a social media expert. I have six years in the industry working with influencers, social strategy of some of the biggest brands in America. I'm also a Twitch streamer. So, you know, come follow me on Twitch. Link's down there. I stream four days a week. Uh, yeah, it's a good time. Come follow me. But, but, but before we move on to the subject of this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out social media tips all the time and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any videos from me. And if you have a question around Twitch or social media in general, share it in the comments, I'd love to help. So before I get into the tips, I wanna talk first about the landscape of Twitch in general, especially in the last year and what's been happening on social media across the board. So first of all, we went into a panorama. You may remember that we all got to work from home. Um, everyone's suddenly stuck in their house with nothing to do. You know that panorama that we've been in, that Panasonic. So along with that panorama, that Panasonic, also came a lot of people looking for outlets, a lot of people looking for new passions, maybe getting re-excited about old ones. I certainly fall into that category and they lean on Twitch to kind of get that out of their system. I did the same thing. I started streaming in February of two, February. February of 2020, right before we all went into lockdown here in New York, it was a wild ride. And suddenly we're all looking for stuff to do. We're all looking for new passions. We're all looking for new ways to stay inspired and engaged and, you know, maybe connect with people, especially because we're not able to go out and see our friends. I was definitely one of those people. I was desperate for a way to connect. And that is why I started streaming in the first place. And a lot of people out there did the same thing. In the beginning of this pandemic, we see this boom of streamers on Twitch joining the platform, creating content. And not only that, we also see a boom in viewership because everyone's stuck at home and they want company while they're at work, while they're at school, while they're cleaning their house, while they're homeschooling their kids. People are desperate for company and connection, especially in this time. So you see this huge influx of viewers and this huge influx of content creators. Happy marriage. But now the world is starting to open up. And as the world is opening up, behaviors are changing. So let me just set that as a landscape for you to ruminate on, let it percolate in your brain up there. So with that as the landscape, here's my first tip for you. Your metrics do not define you. They are not a reflection of who you are. Your metrics are in no way reflective of your value as a person and what you can give to the world. And you really need to internalize that. We all do. I think as content creators, we get very, very attached to our work. And of course, we're personally invested in it, but that doesn't make it us. If suddenly our metrics go down or our views go down, that doesn't reflect on us being less valuable as people or less interesting or less entertaining. You ultimately have value and interest outside of your content. And that's gotta be something that you hold on to in a really, really big way. And I think this is a uniquely Western problem, right? I think in America, especially with like entrepreneurial culture being very trendy, how many videos do you see on YouTube that are like, make money fast, how I got my first hundred thousand dollars. Hustle culture is very lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it very popular, it's very lucrative. So when you see all these people out there making all this content on how you should be a great hustler and it's all about the grind and sleep when you're dead, ask yourself if they're making money off of you because they probably are. <laughs> they're making money off of your hustle. So hustle culture really has a lot lacking. There's a lot to be desired in hustle culture. So if you've been grinding and grinding and grinding, you suddenly see your numbers are suffering. I would pause about that because that's got nothing to do with you if suddenly your numbers are dropping. It's not that you're not hustling hard enough. It's not that you're not working hard enough. It might be that you're not working smart enough, but let's get working hard out of your vocabulary. Your hustle and the grind and how hard you're working doesn't matter to anyone, really. It doesn't define who you are. It's not a personality trait. And I don't say this without, from a holier than thou perspective. I'm that person too. For a long time, it was a badge of honor for me to be booked and busy and stressed and tired all the time. There is nothing admirable about being tired all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and say that. 
<laughs> and I see a lot of gaming channels and education channels and just kind of entrepreneurial channels telling you how you should be working so hard and working to the bone. I don't think there's any sort of value in being tired all the time. If you're really just focused on working hard, I would ask you if you're working smart. You've got good brains. <laughs> because being rested is also super valuable. <laughs> so if your metrics are becoming an indicator for you of how hard you're working or your self-worth and value, you've got to make that separation. It takes practice, but make that separation between your metrics and your worth because you have value outside of your metrics. You are a valuable person. You are an important person. People care about you and you are creative and interesting and entertaining without those metrics. Okay. <laughs> and I said this before, I think this is a uniquely American problem. Think about any career, not just streaming, but in America, when you meet someone for the first time, they ask you, what do you do? And you could answer, I ride bikes in my free time. I love to go running. I paint. I actually love to sing in the shower. But what they're really asking you is what you do for work. Because in America, what you do for work is a huge part of who you are. That doesn't exist in a lot of other places. What you do for your job doesn't matter to lots of people. And I think we should start to embody that a little more, especially when it comes to your streaming. So if your metrics are starting to get you down, turn them off, especially while you're streaming. If you have your viewer count up, if you have your sub count up, all of that, I would just turn them all off. It can be really hard at first, especially for me as a social media professional. I find it really hard to have my metrics off because I like to have a constant barometer of how I'm doing, like a constant gauge of how I'm doing. But I turned them off recently, all of them. And it's made me have a lot more fun on stream. If you want to do the expert level version of this, turn off your metrics for an entire month, not just while you're live, but the whole time. Turn them off the whole time. Don't even check them one time and clock how that feels for you. Clock how that makes you feel. Are you able to connect more to the fun of streaming? Are you able to just have a good time? I'm going to venture to say that you are. So give it a try. All right, so if you're able to finally make that disconnect and separate your metrics from your personal value, from your worth as a human being, and you're ready to maybe start looking at them again, turn them back on, here's my second tip for you. Use your metrics as a diagnostic tool to spark inspiration, not as a final grade. And I don't know about you, but when I'm checking my metrics often, I can get into a really toxic spiral of checking my metrics every time I finish my stream. How many views did I get? How many subs did I get? And it can be really detrimental, especially if you're in a period where it might be going down. And worst of all, I use it to let it dictate whether I'm gonna have a good day or a bad day. That is not what they're for. Don't let your metrics dictate whether you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. If your views were down, first of all, acknowledge that it likely has nothing to do with you. Think about how I started this video, talking about the landscape that we're in. There are lots of changes just in user behavior that likely have nothing to do with you. Is it the summertime? Are people out and about? Are people going on vacation? Or if it's if you're seeing your subs are going down, are people saving for textbooks in the fall? Maybe they have to go back to school. Are people saving for vacation? Are people saving for holidays like 4th of July? There's a lot of reasons that have nothing to do with you for why your views or your subs or whatever it may be could be going down. That's not to say that there aren't reasons that it could be though. And that's what I mean when I say use it as a diagnostic tool. But really what you have to do is be critical about what you can control and about what you can't control and only worry about what you can control. So if people are going on vacation, saving for textbooks, all that stuff I just mentioned, you have no control over that. So don't worry about it. Just accept that that portion of people is gone away for a while. They're literally on vacation, so don't even worry about them. Focus on what you can control. Did you change up your game recently? Did you change up your schedule? Is there a new format that you're testing out? Check when that happened in your streams. Watch them back. Was there a drop at a particular point? What happened then? Did you change your game up? Did you change the category? Did you take too long of a break? Just be really critical about those things because those are things you can control. Again, they have nothing to do with you or your value as a creator, but something may have just fallen flat that day. And that's okay. Everyone has good days and bad days. In my regular day job, there are some days where I show up 110%. There are some days I show up 60%. Those days where you show up 60% are just as valid as the days you show up 100%. It is not realistic to expect that you will show up at 100% every single day. So be kind to yourself. Acknowledge that. As long as you're showing up, 
That's all that matters. At the end of the day, content creation has peaks and it has valleys, the same as any other industry. Any business will tell you that their fiscal year has really strong periods where they make lots of money and really slow periods where their employees take a vacation, where they encourage people to take time off, where, you know, it's just slower. Streaming's no different. The year will have ups and downs and you have to ride that wave and find ways to find value and stay inspired through that. And I just want to take a second to acknowledge all the amazing, amazing content creators that have kept me inspired over the last 18 months. A lot of these tips come from conversations that I have with really inspirational content creators and they keep me going in the hard times. Part of why I'm making this video is because I'm in a rut too. I also get into ruts and this is what I do to kind of keep myself inspired too. So big ups to all the creators who have helped me stay inspired and grounded. I've linked all their channels in the description. Please go and follow all of them. And my third tip, which I think is kind Kind of the most fun and the most important is once you have been able to nail down those things that you can control, what you can do to tweak your content and make it better, use this rut to get inspired. Especially if you're having a slow period, if people are on vacation, people are taking time off from stream, get inspired. Consume a lot of content. Take a break. <laughs> when was the last time you went on vacation? If it was a long time ago, maybe you should take a break, take a week off, take two weeks off. Acknowledge that, hey, your subs are gonna maybe drop a little bit. That's okay, that's okay. You can get those back, but you're allowed to take a break. And I don't see a lot of streamers encouraging this community to take breaks. And if you're not taking time off, you'll get burned out. And when you're getting burned out, you're not gonna be having any fun. And when you're not having fun, your content's gonna be bad. If you don't love going to work, you're not gonna produce good work. And in my previous video, I said, you know, you're not gonna have fun every day. That's true, I still maintain that. I think it's unrealistic and unreasonable in any job to expect that you're gonna have fun every single day and wanna show up and feel motivated every single day. No, some days you're gonna be 110%, some days you're gonna be 60%. Both are valid. But if you're having these prolonged periods of not being inspired, feeling anxious, creating the same humdrum content all the time, that's an alarm bell and a red flag that maybe you should just take a few days off. It's okay. Your community will be there when you get back. And I know when I'm feeling really stuck in a rut, what I do to get inspired is watch a lot of content. I watch a lot of my friends who I really, really love. I watch my favorite content creators. I read about content creation. I listen to podcasts about content creation. And I especially really like to watch content creators that are outside of my wheel house. Like one of my favorite content creators right now is Trixie Mattel, an amazing drag queen. She um, dubs herself as the world's most famous drag queen with a passion for makeup artistry. <laughs> and I love her content. I love her editing style, but it has nothing to do with gaming. It has nothing to do with streaming, but <laughs> the way that Trixie makes content is so inspiring to me. I'm also really loving Emma Chamberlain right now. I love Brittany Broski. Brittany Broski, ooh, you so funny. You one of the funniest out there, my friend. You are hilarious, absolutely fudging hilarious. I love all your content. And watching content sometimes that has nothing to do with me gets me out of my own head and helps me to see just like what I find entertaining. And sometimes dissecting what's entertaining to you and seeing how you can incorporate that into your own stream can be super fun. <laughs> so get inspired, watch a lot of content, spend some time outside in nature, get some vitamin D gamers. Gamers, we all vitamin D deficient. We gotta get our vitamin D up, okay? <laughs> it's okay to have a slow period. Give yourself permission to just feel it. At the end of the day, every career has its own hard. Streaming and content creation has its own set of problems and difficulties, just like any career, just like any passion. And even though we're playing video games all day long, most of us at least, that doesn't mean we're having fun all the time. And that's okay. Sometimes you show up 110%, sometimes it's 60%, and that's all right. And a philosophy that I keep in mind all the time and has kind of become a mantra for my life is that it's a given that life is hard, but one of the blessings that we have is that we get to choose our own hard. The ups and downs and the peaks and valleys in content creation is one of the biggest hards that we have in this industry, but being able to ride those waves, recognize those patterns, and learn how to optimize in those different states is one of the biggest skills that I wish I could impart to content creators. And I think these three tips are really gonna help you do that. <laughs> So tell me, what is it that you do to help fight the ruts, the content creator blues, the stress of streaming? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion and share tips because I wouldn't have been able to create this video if I didn't have content creators helping me as well. I would love to pay it forward and continue that in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found a tip and it helpful, make sure to give this video a like and share one of your own tips in the comments so we can keep the conversation going. And if we can get to 150 likes on this video, 
I would love to do a social media and streaming Q&A. A lot of you in my streams have been asking for one for absolutely ages, so I would love to do one for you. And also follow me on Twitch if you're not already, because I stream four days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, over on my Twitch channel, and it's very vibey, so come vibe with us. And actually, I gotta go because I start streaming in 10 minutes, and I would like to eat some food first, but I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> so before I get into the, am I recording? I'm recording. It's okay. I'm recording. <laughs> I'm just realizing I really wore the right hoodie for this. My best friend gave this to me. He says, don't be stressing. You were blessed. You are a blessing. I love you. I love you. Socially distanced love for you. You were blessed. Enjoy it. <laughs>